Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Greg. Welcome to the channel. Uh, I've been um, expanding my knowledge of uh, Vedic astrology, so I wanted to talk about some other things that I learned about. And that's, um, if you don't know, you, you, we go by your uh, first house is your, uh, your ascendant, and uh, that's basically your personality, uh, how you look at the world, and it represents your body, your mind, how you think, and all that. Uh, so it, it's called the ascendant. It pretty much is the the main uh, um, thing. It's it interprets your personality the most, um, besides your moon sign and your sun sign. The first priority is your ascendant. But um, what I've been reading about with uh, Vedic astrology is you can use uh, different houses as ascendants also. Like for instance, your moon, whatever house your moon is in, you can actually use that moon as your first house so like um like take for instance like mine my, my moon is in the in the 12th house so now I could, I could consider that the first house um representing my personality because your moon too is, is really important about who you are it's your mind your emotions the way you take in things your compassion your nurturing ability it's your it's a lot of how you um how you think and how you feel about things so it's really, uh, it's up there with the Ascendant, yeah, but it's, the Ascendant is more important, but you can still look, consider that as, a, as an Ascendant. So if I'm looking at the, at the Ascendant as being the 12th house, now if I want to look at um, my mother, I would look at the 4th house from the 12th house, so that would be the 3rd house. Then I'd check out that sign and start considering that too, besides the 4th house, which is the usual for the 1st for the house Ascendant, it's the 4th house, represents your mother. But if my moon is in the 12th house, and I'm considering that as the ascendant, now I would look at the 3rd house to find out a little more about my mother, too. Um, and also, like, the 5th house represents children, uh, creativity, entertainment, um, higher education. It represents also uh, mantra, your uh, interest in mantra, in ritual. So then I would start looking at the 5th house from my 12th house, which would be the 4th house. So that would give me a little more info on my uh, fifth house from my ascendant. Um, same thing with the spouse, too. The spouse from the first house is the seventh house. But now my moon is in the twelfth house. Now I'm taking into the, I'm looking at the sixth house because that is the, uh, the seventh from the twelfth house. You always want to consider, you always count the first house that you're in as the first number. So the, you count the twelfth house and then you count as one then the first house would be the second house and so on then you get to your to the sixth house so you can look at things differently you can find out a little more information about yourself um the tenth house also represents uh your career so um you would look at the the tenth house from your moon to also find out more about your career the eleventh house is the house of gains again you look at the eleventh house from your moon you can find out some more stuff about that too and also, you can, um, since the fourth house represents your mother, you can use that fourth, that fourth house as the ascendant for your mother. And you can take a look at her. You can look at the, um, let's say the, uh, well, the, the, second, the second house from the fourth house would represent her family. Or you want to look at uh, the fourth house from the fourth house, that would represent your mother's mother, your grandmother. And then, of course, um, the seventh from the fourth house would be the tenth house to look at her spouse, your father. And, um, you know, you could find out all these different things. You want to learn about her spirituality? You would look at the, uh, the ninth and the twelfth house from the fourth house to see what, uh, what her, um, if there's any uh, spiritual potential or anything like that. So you can find out different things. Same thing with um, your father, too. Your father is the 10th house. So you, you would consider that as the ascendant for your father. And um, let's say the, the third house from the 10th house, that would be like his courage, his willpower. Represents his, how strong he is, you know. Um, the 6th uh, house from the 10th house was rep represent like his enemies, any opposition that he's encountering. Represents debts stuff like that um also um the eighth house from any ascendant 
uh, represents like obstacles. Um, it represents life and death. It represents transformation, uh, deep occult knowledge. So you can look at these, um, use different houses as ascendants. Even your um, your uh, Aruda Lagna, which is your, your reflection, how other people see you in the world. You know, you experience yourself as your ascendant, your first house. But uh, other people see you as this other pro different projection. Where you might be, uh, you might be uh, a Taurus, other people will see you as, a, as an Aries, based on the, the calculation of your Aruda Lagna. But you can, you can look at that Aruda Lagna as the ascendant too. To see how other find out how more, how other people see you, you can look at um, the third house from your Aruda Lagna to see your willpower. How do other people see how strong you are in the world? You can look at the uh, the eleventh house from your Aruda to see your your gains. How other people think you're earning money. Um, the twelfth house from your Aruda would be uh, your spirituality, your spiritual isolation, your imagination, um, your interest in travel. I don't know if people think that deep about who you are, but, you know, you can see those different things about how other people view you. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, look at these charts. I mean, it's endless. And also, um, the moon also represents your mother, too. So, um, wherever your moon is, you know, it, it represents part of your mother. Besides the fourth house, your moon sign, too, represents your mother. If your moon is aspect in your fourth fourth house, that's a um, pretty good, uh, even a more better reading about your mother. Um, let's say like your moon is in uh, the sign of a, a Venus, of a of a Taurus, or a Libra. The Venus usually doesn't get along with the moon, so that would be like some conflict there. That would indicate conflict with your mother some type of conflict either you don't get along with her or she don't get along with you or both you know if you got your uh, moon sign in your uh, sixth house that too represents like a conflict conflict with the mother some type of some something some type of conflict going on and um what else can i say ninth house the ninth house is the house of uh, spirituality also, um, your sun sign, too, represents your father, too. That's another way you can look at uh, your father, too. Like maybe the ninth house from, from your sun sign would represent his uh, spirituality. Um, yeah, so there's different ways you can uh, look at this chart. It's kind of endless. I mean, it's a whole big maze. No, I got to turn that thing off. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so there's different ways that you can look at, use the um, the Vedic astrology chart. I mean, it's endless. It's so many different things, you know. Um, that's what I really love about this. It's really, uh, there's a lot of accuracy in it. Then you got these other uh, D9 chart and D2, and there's a lot of different other charts that represent different things that you can take a look at and find out different things about yourself. Um, let's say, um, like, uh, like your fifth house. Your fifth house is your house of creativity. Let's say you're interested in some kind of uh, artistic something and you want to see if uh, there's going to be any gains from it. You can look at the, the 11th house from your fifth house which which would uh, represent the gains from that fifth house. So there's there's different different kinds of ways you can use this. And also the second house too from the fifth house represents gains also. So you consider this second house in the eleventh house. And um if you want to consider your creativity as a career, you look at the tenth house from the fifth house too. That would represent your career. If there's gonna be a possibility of a career, if there's good alignment, you know, and of course you want to look at the aspects of these different houses, um, what sign it's in, you know, if these things get along. Certain planets get along with each other, and sometimes they don't, depending on how close or how far they are from each other. So all these different types of things. So you can use uh, different houses as ascendants 
to find out more about yourself, your family, um, a lot of different things. So if anybody's interested in a Thunder Astrology reading, I'll leave the link on the bottom. And talk to you guys later. Peace.